What is going on? What is going on? Welcome back. I've just finished shooting a little thumbnail for a previous video. So I think you would have seen this by this time this one comes out. But today we're going to go a little bit off track and talk about the gear that I use to shoot all my videos and pictures. I do get a couple of messages every now and again. What's this? What's that? So figured let's make a full in-depth video on this wonderful bag behind me that comes with me on every single journey and take you through the, all the paraphernalia that I use. But what a day for this. This is just gorgeous. Have a look at this. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better day to do this. This is stunning. Started off really horrible and cloudy this morning. Had a little bit of rain, but the skies have opened up and the light is shining upon us once again. It's fantastic out here. But let's find a little place to push you. I think this looks perfect. Okay. Let's see. How does that look? A little bit. Yeah, perfect. Right, on to the first item, which is this giant, giant thing. This is the F-Stop Sucker bag. Got this about three or four years ago, and I can't recommend this bag actually almost enough. All the zips, it's been with me, let's say, it's been with me up down mountains during crazy cold temperatures during the winter in Lapland, up mountains in the summer, it's been everywhere, in and out of the van, pulling on all sorts of things. I've only ripped one little cord bit right at the back here, but that was just a, I don't even know what that's there for, it's really weird. Fabric is fantastic. It's a little bit waterproof, I think. I don't want to test it too much considering the gear I've got in here. But yeah, can't recommend this enough. It stores everything. You've got pockets everywhere. And I think I've got the, I think I've got the large ICU. Not entirely certain, don't quote me on that. But this bag gives me, there's enough space up here to have still some extra clothes, a bit of food, extra bit of water, pockets everywhere. You can buy extra straps to go on the front. So in the winter, carry snowshoes, skis, snowboard, hiking sticks for the summer, whatever you feel like really. Right, get to the nitty gritty of it. We'll start with the, the most annoying part of my camera gear, albeit one of my favorite lenses, the Sony 4.5, 5.6, 100 to 400. Super sharp, great range from the 100 to 400. And if you're shooting on a high resolution camera, which I am when I do pictures, you can do the, you can change the sensor to crop sensor. So it turns the 100 to 400 times by 1.4, whatever that is, I think. Don't quote me on that one either. But yeah, can't recommend this enough. The only downside is the weight. That's the only downside even though apparently I think it's actually quite light for 100 400 lens but it does add a bit of a, a bit of a chunk of weight to the bag favorite lens for astrophotography landscapes northern lights you name it the Lauer 12mm 0D apparently no distortion but honestly if you get close enough to anything with a 12mm lens it's going to get distorted full metal cased body it is built like a tank an absolute tank. It is wonderful. It can take filter threads. The only annoying part is that if you do knock the, fit, the, the lens hood and it comes out of place because it's so wide, you can get these edges into a picture. So always you have to make sure that's turned on. Manual focus, which is fine because at 12 mil, you're pretty much chaunting as much in the view as possible. So set that to infinity and ear off. Let's see what else we got in here. Sony 55 1.8 Carl Zeiss. This, I don't know what Sony did with this lens because this came out in 2013 I believe and it was one of their first lenses that came out with full full frame bodies I think I'm not entirely certain but it is ridiculously sharp. The quality of this lens is phenomenal. If you were wanting, if you're in the Sony world or any world you can adapt this lens I guess, if you want a good kind of all around uh, the nifty 50. This little thing will do it for you. And on the note of the 55, I actually recently shot one of my favorite images that I've shot for a very long time. This was, uh, what, two videos ago, a hike. Yamton? No, no, not Yamton. Yes, Yamton. Yeah, but yeah. And with a shameless plug coming up here, if you are interested in any of my images for print, I've got a print section on my website, head over there, 
email me a short description of the image that you might like to get printed and I'll get in touch with the printer, get a sizing for you. My recommendation would be metal, glass or good old standard photo paper, matte finish. So if you are interested, support phot photographer, that would be fabulous. And attached to that is my favorite, the A7R 3 42 megapixels, it takes the new uh, NPF100Z battery, so it actually lasts for a good amount of time. And this has been my workhorse camera since launch in 2017, I think, yep. So a good few years, it's had a lot of shutter actuations. Probably getting a bit old right now, but she still hasn't died on me. The quality is good, paired with a good lens, you will get an image you can blow up to your heart's content. I've taken some wonderful shots of this. One of my favorites, which I've had printed, is this one. This was in Lapland last year or the year before, and it was with the 16 to 35, super cold. Oh, we have people. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Can't actually believe I was talking to the camera and someone was just coming. My anxiety didn't creep in. Maybe I'm getting a little bit, be little bit better at this. But where was I? Yeah, AR3 with, it was a 16 to 35. And because obviously it's a 42 megapixel camera, you can print pretty decently sized, very large in fact, without losing quality. And this image was in Lapland. I think I've got this printed up. It's like a meter by 150, I think, give or take a bit, but it's on metal. It's in my office at home and it looks, love it. Right. What you're viewing me on is the A7S3. Got that specifically for video work and because they got, when that launched, was it last year or the year before, I think? No, it wasn't the year before, it was last year. Uh, they got the 10-bit color, so obviously you get beautiful colors with this. Autofocus this is great. I've got the 16 to 35 2.8 G Master on there. A little bit of a heavy lens, I must admit. I might upgrade later, or let's say downgrade, I'm not sure, to the newer F4, which I know is apparently half the weight. So it would be a wonderful sort of adventure vlog, YouTube type thing. I do like the 2.8 because you just get a few more extra stops of light. So it's up to you on that one, whether you want to go that way. Microphone wise, DJI wireless system, their new one, which has been out for a while in America, but I ordered this in the UK and then got my parents to send it to me. So but this has changed everything for me. I was never too keen on the shotgun mic on the top of the camera. I always felt I was too close and I couldn't freely move around and talk. This is the perfect system. I could walk off into the forest and still talk to you. It's wonderful. Great audio quality, or at least to my eyes, my eyes, my ears. And connected to the receiver, I have the lavalier mic there. Shaw MVL, I just got this. And the biggest reason I got this was because there is no radio interference between the transmitter and receiver. So it won't pick up any funny sounds. Next, carrying on through the bag, the drone. Oh, whoops. Hey, Mavic 2 Pro does the job. There is no arguments here. It's a bit on the larger side and a bit heavy, but I'm not willing to upgrade just yet because it, it still has good quality, still takes great pictures. Battery life is decent. I do carry, depending on the hike I'm going on or the journey I'm going on, I'll take two extra batteries. So there's three batteries in total. The only thing that I do dis dislike with this is this, the controller. Now I wanted this one because the screen is integrated. You don't have to faff with your phone and the cable and then the app and then something goes wrong and it's brr, really frustrating with previous generations of that. But the only downside to this wonderful aspect, this wonderful thing, is the weight. It's big and bulky. If they could somehow skin this down just a little bit, it would be awesome. Pretty much sums up the contents of this 15 to 20 kilo bag that I hike around with me on these wonderful videos. I hope you enjoyed this. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one.